Well, welcome back to another episode of the Buffalo Happy Hour. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Dude, winery number two. I'm excited for this. We're at Merida State, and we should start with the introductions, and then we'll dive into all the fun stuff that we got lined up. Let's you want to introduce it. yourself? I'm Jason. And I'm Bill. Outstanding. <laughs> oh, and we're Merits, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sorry. See? There we go. <laughs> so... Merritt is obviously your last name and the name of the winery. Was there any thoughts on naming it anything else, or was it always going to be Merritt? There's absolutely no egotism in this industry. <laughs> okay, it, It's all soaked up with the people who start wineries. That's why it's named after, drumroll, the founder. Okay. Yeah. Just one of those things. Yeah. And it's on the Merritt okay. estate. So... The, the Merritt Estate Winery is one of the first wineries organized in Chautauqua County under the new regulations put in place by Governor Carey in 1976. Correct. So the history of the estate dates back to the 1800s, like we mentioned before we started recording. Uh, but the original homestead belonged to the parents of Margaret Merritt. Yeah, Margaret Curit Merritt, my mother. There we go. And then there was a hyphen sample. Right. She remarried okay. after my father passed. Which means the estate has been in the family since the late 19th century. And then William T. Merritt, which is you, turned the estate into a full-functioning winery in 76. And since then, his son, Jason C. Merritt, joined family operations in 98. And the father and son duo have dedicated themselves to their winery, devoting their time and energy into producing some of the best wine in the area. Uh, So far, I definitely cannot disagree. Well, thank you. And the winery is located in the largest grape-growing region east of the Rockies and the largest Concord grape-growing region in the world, which we've recently discussed with uh, the Johnsons, the Johnson Estate, Mm -hmm. and then now you guys are also paramount in this cornerstone of the region, essentially, because you guys have been dating back since since the 70s producing great wine. Right. We actually became winery number 16 in New York. Wow, okay. And before us was, well, Johnson and Ben Morrow, which was Mark Miller, and then places like Taylor and Great Western and Gold Seal, Canandaigua, those are all preceding us, but, uh, and Widmer. But the, uh, the industry was struggling in 76 when Fred's dad, Fred Sr., and I and Mark Miller went to see Hugh Carey and said, hey, we got to do something. We're struggling. They're drowning in the sea of red wine, and they don't want our grapes. So we got the farm winery law passed in 76 when Hugh Carey signed it, Governor Carey, and the rest is history. Now there's over 400 wineries in New York. So you knew Frederick Johnson? Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not saying that, but that's, that's incredible because that was – uh, that circles all the way back to yep. our interview with Johnson Estate. Absolutely. So that's pretty Absolutely. cool. Oh, yeah. Wow. No, Fred Fred was a leader. Their winery is probably 10 years older than ours. Fred started his back in the early 60s. 62? I think it was 62. Mm-hmm. They're, they brand themselves as, I think, the oldest estate winery. Correct. Yep. Correct. Oldest estate winery. Yeah. yeah. In New York. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's incredible. So now, uh, similar in acreage size, you guys used to have hundreds of acres. Mm-hmm. Correct. And now you're down to, uh, you said 40? Well, less than 20, actually. We, we still get grapes from a lot of the vineyards we used to own and operate. Mm-hmm. But when it was an opportunity to sell a vineyard to somebody who could take care of it, we took advantage of that, saying, hey, we'd like to buy the grapes from this vineyard when it comes harvest time. And so it's worked very well for us. And it gave us the opportunity to have funds available to expand. Growth in the wine business is not inexpensive. Being that he and I are the only principals, principals of the company, it made it easier to let the farmers be farmers, True. and we can concentrate on processing the fruit. So they trim, they tie, they do all the spraying and things like that. We then budget ourselves, and we go out there and select the crops that we want, and we bring in the amount of fruit that we want. So if the vineyard's got 10, 10 tons extra or not as much or whatever, we can go out there and get exactly what we need, which helps us do our tank spaces better and things like that. So if we have an overproduction, it's not really our big, you know, it's not our problem, so to speak. So it's easier to, to maintain it that way for us. Awesome. So from a production standpoint, what do you normally put out a year? So our cooperage is about 65,000 gallons, and annually we produce a little over 50,000. 
Okay. So wow. Because you have to have empty takes in order to like take it from here and filter it and put it into this tank, so you can't just fill yourself full of capacity. Sure. So you got to have a little bit of extra space. And so. you've got to have wine ready to go in a bottle. Yeah. To get you through until the new wine's ready. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's never a simple game. It's always Chinese checkers. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, kind of going back to the history portion again, was there ever thought or any thought with you of not taking over the winery? And ne- then, obviously, the next generation coming, was there any thought process that you weren't going to continue the tradition? It wasn't the plan. Okay. But then again, the best laid plans, you never know how that goes. Sure. So, I went to college to be a chef. So, um, I, I graduated with a two-year culinary degree from Paul Smith's College in 1993. Um, and I worked locally at a bunch of different places and um, decided after about six, seven years that I just wasn't happy working for management companies and other people. So I called him on the way home from quitting my job one day and I said, hey. And he goes, aren't you supposed to be working? I said, well, I just quit. So it's time to do something with a winery. So, <laughs> and he's turned into a great winemaker. I mean, I went to school to become a winemaker and he became a winemaker through practice. And yeah. he's with his experience in culinary he's become a very talented chef in balancing the the wine the acidity and the the sweetness it's just his wines are exceptional come on look around i mean if you take the time to look around on the top shelf of these these you'll see bottles that are five six pounds of metals on them yeah when we got here so when we do these interviews we like to take pictures of the establishment that we're interviewing that way we can like highlight it once we do a post before the interview airs to get people excited for it mike was going around taking pictures of the medals and i'm like did you get this shelf over here he's like yeah got it how about this one over here yeah, yeah got it how about this one over here yeah got it because every single shelf is lined with medals yeah did, did I mean, you get the two cases out back on the way to the restaurant <laughs> i don't no, think so I literally just seen those and i was like all right i gotta go back keep adding to this post yeah. and, so, and then there, there is a basket upstairs that we don't put out anymore because they're old yeah i mean we've been doing this a long time when was the first award that you've won? 76. Okay. Well, 77. Do you remember, was it was what it was monumental it for? for you? Or was and what monumental? was it? What, what type of? It was the silver for Niagara. Okay. It was State Fair, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at State Fair. Oh. Uh, was it monumental? No, but it's kind of a nice pat in the back. Absolutely. Yeah. Did, the, did the blizzard of 77 impact anything that year? Not really. I mean... Um, you know, that was our second vintage, and we didn't really have as much snow as some of them. Most of the grapes that we work with, and back in the day when we owned all those grapes, uh, they're Native American, also known as Labrusca style grapes, and so they're used to these cold climates. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you have a, a winter where it kind of warms up and thaws and warms up, thaws, that's when you're going to have a problem because um, what's going to happen is the sap's going to start running. And then it freezes again, and then it'll split the vines, and then you're dead. Sure. Um, so they're pretty residual, pretty hardy. Uh, the French American hybrid grapes, which is a, a, a French grape that's grafted on American stock or stock that's good in the climate that you're in, they at the grafting point have more of a weak spot, um, and so those they got to take a little more care um, for things like that. But most of what we work with is the native varieties. Um, and it's just it's easier uh one of my business models that i came up with because there's a lot of people that pan the, the concord grape and the niagara grape because it's too welch's juicy kind of kind of feel one of our most popular wines is our bella rosa and that's 100 percent concord grapes and i believe that you got to be big with what's in your backyard first mm-hmm. and then you can bring on the you know the merlots and the cabs and things like that but use what's in your backyard it's kind of like building a foundation you know you want to come out and, and put all these big french varietals and rieslings and pinot grigios and things like that out there but use what's in your backyard mm-hmm. first. Like, be proud of what your heritage is. So, Speaking of that point, your logo is kind of like a, a cool medieval family crest-esque thing. Mm-hmm. Can you guys speak on that and kind of the, the story behind it? Well, his mother took what was the, the original family crest. This is the original saying on the family crest, mm-hmm. Mario et Merito. And then this was bands of ermine, and there were dogs on each side. The rest of it's pretty... Crossing swords. Yeah, crossing swords. There's a pair of swords that crossed in the front. Okay. But um, she kind of tied it to the wine industry. So... And the Mario at Merito, I believe in... You said Latin? Latin means I am deserving and worthy. Yeah. So that is our family crest. That's awesome. Yeah. Altered a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. You really wouldn't want anything else. That's awesome. 
It's gonna be great on the video or on the audio. Right <laughs> oh, it's fine. I mean, so so for those, we'll just dive right into it. So you guys have. Yeah, Copper's having a drink. Yeah. So, so this we are. Might as well too. Right. He's yeah. amazing. Uh, so you you guys have a Cooper Club. Copper. So, Copper. so what is? It's the Copper is, Club. What is the Copper Club? Yeah. So what does the Copper Club entail? So that's our wine club. Um, basically, you know, Copper, as you can hear, and he's he's probably going to be on the video at some point. Yeah. Um, he's our ham that that meets and greets everybody that walks into place. A uh, little intimidating looking at first, but, I mean, he's just a really laid-back, cool dog. Um, so it was kind of a good way to tie in something, you know, family-friendly to our, our wine club. And there's just different levels of which people can get three or four bottles of wine each quarter. Um, if they want to do dry wines, they select the dry wines. If they want to do sweeter wines, they select sweet wines. But every quarter of that wine is shipped directly to them. Um, plus, uh, under normal years, uh, we would have a wine club party in the fall, like a wine and cheese party, and they would get tickets to like our wine festivals and things like that that we have, uh, and other discounts here in the in the wine shop as well. Um, so it's just a way to just kind of bring people in and, and kind of feel like they give them a piece of the action of, of what's going on around here. And it was just a natural tie-in to have to have Copper be part of it. So, yeah. You can't beat that at all. Yeah, we've always had big dogs. I mean, it's just the thing. Everybody, we started uh, a bunch of years ago. I had a Rottweiler, a big German Rottweiler. It was 145 pounds, and he was just this big German bear that just lumbered around, <laughs> greeted everybody as placid as the day is long. After that, we had a, an Italian Mastiff. His name was Duke, and the same sort of personality. And then you know, we got Copper. I rescued Copper. So the other two I brought from a puppy, but he's great. Um, I'm fantastic with dogs. Not so good at relationships, but great with dogs. <laughs> yeah, my son is not single. He has a dog. Yeah, other than that, I'll make a great wife someday. I can cook. There you go. Absolutely. That's all you need. So talking about the cooking aspect, we, we talked about you being a chef. Mm -hmm. How has that played in with pairings for, for wines? And do you do events where you will host a wine and a pairing night where mm -hmm. you can cook for yeah, people? Yeah, we've had winemakers dinners in the past where we would pair up with a local restaurant um, and we would have the chef put out some sort of a menu. And then I would select a host of different wines, white and red or sweet and dry, that would that would pair well with said dish. And it would be a full course meal. It would it would start with an appetizer, uh, it would then have a soup, and there would be an intermezzo, so no palate cleanser. And then we had a couple of different entrees, and then it would finish off with some sort of a dessert. You know, we'd finish off either with an ice wine or a port. Now that that's what I'm sipping here, mm -hmm. but it was just a nice way that we would get up and we would talk to everybody. Um, and we had to explain the wines and explain, explain why we felt it would pair nicely with it. And we would give them the option. Like, we wouldn't pre-choose it. We would come up and say, do you prefer dry wines or sweeter wines? Oh, okay, you know, we will pour you X, Y, Z for that portion of the dish. And so it was something that worked out real nice at that point. And it's something we probably want to get back to eventually. But the restaurant that we were working with has since then gone out of business. Mm -hmm. um, and so we haven't really found a good fit since then. But, you know, it's something that would definitely be on the radar for future. Sure. So for, you mentioned a... Uh, getting people involved with a piece of the action you guys have a delivery service as well <laughs> yeah well that's for the covid policy right now so it's just basically okay. a way i turned into a glorified pizza delivery guy basically <laughs> um once uh, one of the restrictions that came out or one of the benefits whatever you want to call it we were deemed essential when all this went down because the liquor stores which was which was an actual blessing as mm -hmm. my dog is underneath me um <laughs> He fits. He ships. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> yeah, so basically, it was they came out and they just said that wineries um, could do a closed bottle service delivery for people. The only thing we had to do was travel with our licensing and things like that in the in the vehicle with us. Just you know, so it said that you know we were legit to do what we did, and it was something initially that that worked out pretty well. We were doing probably ten deliveries a week, which doesn't sound like a lot, sure, but. Um, it was I mean, a minimum. We weren't having anybody come through the door. Right. So right. I, and it was a minimum of six to 12 bottles. Um, what do we got going on here? Oh. He's he's wrapped up in the cords. <laughs> he's all right. He's good. All right, we're back. Sorry about all that. No, we're good. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, it was. <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> <laughs> we just won't get him fired up. Yeah. But anyway, so it's something that as things have opened up and, and the restrictions have loosened a little bit, has gone less and less. Um, but we still do, you know, maybe one, two a week um, to people that are, are more comfortable staying home and things sure. like that. Um, but it was a way for us to still stay in touch with as many people as we could, you know, when things got weird. Yeah. Uh, and I would say 2020 has been weird at best. Absolutely. So. Very very weird. There's not enough wine to get us through 2020. <laughs> oh, you just have not. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yes, better. I was going to say, at that, let's call the social. <laughs> yeah. Just call us. <laughs> now, there's 
not just a huge tasting room that you guys have, but there's also a pavilion mm -hmm. with a hotline uh, outdoor kitchen, mm -hmm. and then there's space for a beer tent. There's picnic tables everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's light, beautiful landscaping all over the place. So the types of events that you guys have here are what? Outside Pretty much of just anything you want. Anything, any gathering you want. The, the biggest ones are normally wedding, weddings and wedding receptions, and we host both, um, usually in conjunction with each other. But um, family reunions. Um, Celebrations of life. Yeah. And unfortunately, coming up next week. Unfortunately, right now we can't do much. Sure. Um, sure. Everything's very restricted for what we can and can't do. Um, but I refuse to adopt the the new normal thing. I, I think eventually we'll get back to sure. what what our status quo would be. But yeah, we've got a full kitchen actually this weekend coming up. Um, we're actually doing uh, in lieu of our September Fest, which was normally the weekend after Labor Day. Um, we're actually doing a garbage plate, which is. Um, a Rochester style yep. favorite that we're bringing down this way. There's not a lot of restaurants in the area that do that. Um, and so we're, we're doing a garbage plate for uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, a um, bunch of different proteins and things like that. It's something that we did earlier in the year um, when things were still extremely restrictive when we were doing like drive through, like chicken barbecues mm -hmm. and father's day, we did you know, like a um, barbecue rib dinner. We did a prime rib dinner garbage plate of all the things that we had, did, had had done at that time was the most popular and so we brought that back for like an end of the year kind of thing because people were really like wow this i mean it doesn't look like much but man it's fantastic and and you know the first <laughs> one we did was a chicken barbecue and we did 1100 dinners wow yeah. in two days yep that's awesome so yeah, yeah we came and cooked on site yeah. and we just served did a great job that's incredible yeah that's so much food yeah. 1100 so dinners fun. in two days? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I used the wrong F. Yeah. I agree with you. I do now, that a lot. It <laughs> 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 happens. Yeah, you're a bum. Uh, it's all good. So you, you, you've, uh, you've generally already touched on your local partnership and relationships with the local farmers and other businesses, but mm -hmm. what else have you guys done outside of the main stake partnerships that you have just for, like, general upkeep and things? Um, like any community outreach work or anything like that or has it just been um one of the things we do like we hit, get hit up a lot for donations and things like that for charitable charitable foundations mm -hmm. whatever um typically uh we're not in a position where we can do a cash donation ever but we're in a position where we can always do an in-kind donation as sure. wine stuff like that so we've worked in the past with like the american heart association when they did their heartball in buffalo the, uh, junior diabetes Re research juvenile di diabetes my bad um, foundation they do a gala every year um, we've worked with Western New York Heroes and their gala um, we're actually they're doing a virtual one this year mm -hmm. and we're gonna donate some wine uh, for their auctions and things like that so that's how we kind of get back or give back you know golf tournaments and things like that um, a lot of times we'll end up giving people product but also give them like a gift card so it brings people back here so then we can engage them one-on-one -on -one. so it's not just like hey cool bottle of wine let's drink it and be done mm -hmm. so we want to have some sort of call to action you know instead of just giving product away um, so as best we can we try to work with it and copper is is another one uh, we rescued him locally at the Lakeshore Humane Society and we've since worked with them we partner up with them for their wolf stock thing and a couple other events that they work out through the to, through the year Plus, we normally have three wine festivals every year that we host, and we have them come and they, you know, do a donation thing or whatever, and we'll raise money or help them raise money, and they can bring their animals here to try to get them adopted, et cetera. Sure. So, so talking about the community aspect again as well, with the uh, wine trail in the area, when did you guys start being involved in that, and have you seen any challenges because you're not on route 20 so before he answers i'm going to stop him <laughs> and he never takes credit for this he's the one who founded the wine trail oh, originally okay. it was the chautauqua wine trail initially since then i will let him take on but he never <laughs> takes credit for being the one that actually got the wine trail off the ground initially well yeah. the the new york state wineries and it, initially it was chadwick bay and woodbury and rubarian and ourselves rubarian and chadwick bay are both out of business now and then after that, they, uh, Willow Creek joined us and Johnson. And then there was another winery that's out of business, Vetter, was Sh part of it. Slow Stepkin was another one. Slow Stepkin was another one. He's gone. And he's gone, too, out of business. Blueberry Sky was another and one. And Blueberry Sky came in a little later, and then then uh, Noble. 
and since then Mazda, and I couldn't tell you how long ago, 10, maybe 12 years ago, um, it was suggested that maybe we should encourage the Pennsylvania wineries to join us. And since then, uh, we've formed a two border or two two state cross border wine trail that um, has 22 members now. Wow! Um, and we put on some wonderful events. Of course, we only put on one this year, and they've all been canceled since. Yeah. And it's it's been extremely destructive to the the uh, financial soundness of the wine trail. It's just, I mean. No, no, no events, no money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're we're limiting our advertising. We're limiting it to just social media. Sure. But uh, it's a very effective method. A lot of people come in from Pennsylvania and from Ohio, as well as Buffalo, to our wine trail. Ours is actually the only hybrid wine trail in the state, meaning the two states. Everything else, like the Seneca Wine Trail mm-hmm. and Hudson Valley, they all have their own individual ones. But this is the only one that cross borders with the second how state. How common is that throughout the rest of the United States? Are there many cross states? I don't know of any. Okay. I don't That's either. really interesting. So what was that conversation like to convince you or to at least make that initial step to do this? Well, a couple of them joined because, I mean, Penn Shore and Maza were out there in Arrowhead. Presque Isle all came on board, Heritage. And, so, and then some new ones have come on since. So it, it's actually been very good as far as promotions is concerned. Uh, and it gives people a destination. Now you've got 20 wineries to go see on a 45-mile trail as opposed to four wineries at a spot or six wineries at a spot. So it's worth the three-hour drive up from Pittsburgh or the two-and-a-half-hour drive from Cleveland. And, and we see a lot of Cleveland, Pittsburgh people. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Erie, <coughs> big market. And there's... There's definite credence to the whole strength and numbers thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we suffer at the northern end of the trail um, because a decent amount of the advertising goes to Erie, Pittsburgh, Ohio, Cleveland, that whole area, and not as much up here because there's only four of us, and then there's about a 20-minute gap. So there's ourselves, Willow Creek, uh, Woodbury, and Liberty Vineyards up here within five, ten minutes of sure. each other. And then it's about a 20, 25 minute gap till you get over to Johnson's, and then there's a big, a big tick off from there, um, where Johnson's and uh, Maza and uh, no. 21 Bricks are mm-hmm. all real close to each other, and so like they're about what's considered the midpoint on the trail. So it doesn't hurt them one way or another, sure. depending on where the advertising goes. And so we always try to do something a little different to try to bring people up here. We try to make it a little more fun. We have the dog, or I'll do something a little more special with the food, mm-hmm. or maybe, you know, we'll have a little band, or we'll have something going on to make it so people are like, man, i got to get the merit because of whatever. Uh, so we always try to give it just a, a little above and beyond to try to, to drag people up this sure. way. Instead of sitting and going, well, darn, we're not getting as many people. Yeah, absolutely. So talking about your wine, how many different staples do you have from the Merit brand hmm. and then eventually we'll have to get to the blue one just because I don't know if I've seen one of those in real person yeah. before. I don't know if we've ever counted have we? Yeah it's kind of a tough thing I, I usually tell people you know 26 to 28 different labels that we that we work with um, usually it's about 12 different grapes that we produce different wines and it's different blends and things like that um, and since you want to go ahead and jump into that we have two different ones our ecstasy and our, and our five o'clock so the ecstasy was one um, that kind of came about and it was funny because it made him blush really bad the day that we came up with the naming <laughs> in the in the meeting because I just said hey I want to come up with something a little bit edgy because at the point that that was coming out everybody was just pushing the whole sex line just a little bit and so it was like people were coming out with names like O face and panty dropper and woman pleaser and all sorts of different things and just just right there on the line just toting the line a little bit and so a guy that doesn't work for us for us anymore had said, well, what do you think about ecstasy? And I was like, wow, it's kind of a long name, but cool. And he goes, no, what about the initials, XTC? And he kind of came up with the concept. And I was like, well, that's great. And so we kind of ran with it. And we, we marketed this, obviously, right directly towards women and the whole sex appeal thing. And it kind of took off. I mean, we started with a little skinny ice wine style bottle, rapidly moved into a 750, moved it into a 1.5, have wow. since then made it into our wine slush which is now into a concentrate of a wine slush and we also have a champagne style of said wine also a line of clothing booty shorts thongs 
baby tees, tank wow. tops that all go with the whole thing. You ran with this. So, yeah. well, I, yeah. But Off the, of one grape. <laughs> yeah, but the bigger question is, the guy who came up with XTC label, is there any royalty income for that guy, or is it like, thanks <laughs> thanks for your yeah, input? No, no, sorry. No? Um, <laughs> and, you know, and, and he was a nice guy. I'm not even going to go ahead and mention his name, but I don't ever want to take credit for it because, I mean, mm-hmm. he came up with the concept for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but he was also on payroll. So, so <laughs> was that name... <clears throat> Was there any troubles getting that approved at all? No. No? Well, <coughs> it was more formally approval. Okay. It, 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 it really had nothing to do. It was more getting it past him because his ears were bright red during that meeting. Well, <laughs> like, that's not our image. I'm like, listen, we need to drop the skirt just a tiny you bit. You didn't deal with BATF either. They didn't need to know. I got a phone call that says, what does XTC mean? I don't and know. And I said, it's an abbreviation of XTC. Happiness. Which is euphoria. euphoria. Happiness. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> wow. Okay. Right. <laughs> nice. So then the blue one, um, I'm not a real, uh, I get bored reading books, but I surf the internet just like everybody else. Uh, no further questions. Um, <laughs> but as far as the blue goes, it was coming out in Europe uh, first. They were doing all sorts of different things. But if you read up on it, they're like, yeah, you take a red wine and a white wine and it makes a blue wine. No, it doesn't. It makes a pink wine. Right. And so we took one of our wines, which is a Niagara, and we stripped it down with a couple of different chemicals. One was called PVPP, which takes out like, um, what's it, polyvinylpropylene? Polyvinylpropylene. And it takes out oxidized characteristics, things like that. And then it put a thing called activated carbon in there, which strips the color completely out of it and takes some of that grapey Niagara nose out of it. And just basically gives you a white wine base, not a whole lot of activity. And then in there, I put some pina colada flavoring and some blue raspberry flavoring. And we toyed, toyed around with different combinations and things like that until we came up with something where we thought was good. And then I threw a little bit of uh, blue food coloring in there. And came out with 5 o'clock, because it's always 5 o'clock somewhere. Now, again, pushing the line, mm-hmm. not wanting to get into trademark problems right, and stuff absolutely. like that. But we got as close as we could and then started playing with that. Um, with a non-graphics background, I actually designed the label. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Weird as that one came out. And uh, we actually just put this through our carbonator and just had a naming competition on Facebook, which we didn't actually select a name on Facebook itself, but we came up with what was called 5... And then CO2, like CO2 being the champagne, mm-hmm. would have carbonation in it. But instead of it being CO2, we did it as a molecule, but as an SEA. So like the, as I bang into the microphone, so the S and then the EA was like like a molecule and then the O2 underneath it. So it's like a molecule, but it's a play on words. So it ties in the whole C and bubbles and sure. i think i'm losing you guys right now but no, anyway so we don't have the label yet we're working with a company right <laughs> now finishing the label well this is as far as my brain goes so too yeah. so. <laughs> so is this considered ice cream wine? like yeah. what at what point can you consider it a wine at what point can you not well i mean it's, it's considered it's wine. always considered well, a wine. you said that you added pina colada mix in there too right well yeah What's we had added, added a natural flavoring <laughs> to it. but it's it's a wine base okay. always well that's what, that's what i was i guess getting it at. always boils right back down okay. to it's a grape gotcha <laughs> grape mean, equals wine See? right <laughs> they win yeah <laughs> easy so but it's yeah and then and since then i think woodberries came out with something blue as well um and i think other wineries are starting to catch on to sure. that but it's just you, you want to stay somewhat trendy, um, but not get too gimmicky. Yes, we have a few gimmicky wines here, but we again, we try to make it fun. And I turned the blue into a slush as well. So we've got three different wine slushes that we do now. We started with a sangria, which was the original one, and then we moved ecstasy in. And so we had like a citrusy sangria, and then we had a real fruity pomegranate with the two. And then we threw the blue in there, and people were like, what, blue? What, what, what's wow. this stuff? And so, and but to be honest with you, it's a hit or miss. You either love this stuff and you want to pour it on your cereal in the morning, or you're like, "What the hell? I don't want to drink this ever again." So, interesting. Where do you fall on that? Would you pour it on your cereal? I don't really eat breakfast, so (laughs) (laughs) cup of coffee and some sarcasm, I'm good. (laughs) Uh, But honestly, no. I mean, my wine preferences. I'm a big, big red drinker. So, like our our marriage that you're you're sipping on right now, which is our wine master's choice, my personal favorite. I like red blends. In the fall and the winter, I'm a red blend guy, or I'm a I'm a dry white in the summer, spring kind of guy. So, okay. or I'm sipping on a port, and I really enjoy our port with a cigar. So mm. that's my other. I like that. Talking our language now. There you go. 
So you have. So after the podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like your staple products have this same type of label on it. Yes. I'm noticing this Mer- New York port with a different type of label on that. Is mm-hmm. there s- some significance around that? Is this a special release or is this um, just a different label? Well, it's it it is a label that goes along with a port. Antiquey, looking okay. more old school. Sure. Whereas the ecstasy is a fun label. The the five o'clock is a fun label, and the Bella Rosa and the Wine Master's Choice tend to be traditional. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And we've been told many times that we should change our label. That that it's old school. That it's traditional. You got to change it up. You got to make it fun. You got to make it so people will pick it off the shelf. And it's true that unless people are familiar with the product, they go for the flashy label before they go with a label that doesn't have much sex appeal if you will but i feel like from my standpoint you guys are already at that point where you are a staple so mm-hmm. there's no need for you to change your label because certain people markets, already know yes. who you are okay yeah. so th- that brings in another good point where are you able to be bought pretty Every, much the entire state yeah, okay throughout new york state uh we have recently and this is i think our first time announcing it publicly we have recently gotten our pennsylvania license limited winery license which um, under a normal year (laughs) would allow us to take our slush bus which is our food truck down to events and direct market with people Um, or we can also have we also got the farmers market permit to go with this which allows us to set up a tent and do tastings and sales by the bottle direct to consumer in pennsylvania in pennsylvania wow so that we've we've finished we've been working on that for a couple years now but that actually finished and we got the license approved and brought to us um, sometime during the COVID thing. Like say April, April, May is when we got the approval. We got the actual physical license um, late June, July. Um, and it's we, huge. We worked. Oh, yeah. We, just we worked long. Didn't do anything with it. Yeah. yeah, we worked long and hard to do that. And actually, I had to bring on board um, Assemblyman Goodell and a few people from Ag and Markets in order to to push this in because initially we were getting just pushed back from Pennsylvania saying, nope, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But as restrictive as New York state tends to be with some things, and I tread lightly on that, um, <laughs> New York state does allow because of our hybrid wine trail, allow Pennsylvania wineries to obtain a marketing permit and come into our state and sell direct to the consumer at a, or sell into the retail stores. Right. And they just are responsible for sales tax and things like that. But Pennsylvania wasn't giving us a reciprocal arrangement. And so I literally had to get our commissioner of ag and markets to talk to their commissioner of ag and markets and probably go play 18 holes of golf and just say, hey, you know, we should do a reciprocal arrangement here. And so it eventually got down through the channels and somebody listened and just said, oh, okay, this is what these guys want to do. Sure. So we now have said license. So, That's incredible. Were you yeah. the caddy that day when they played golf? Oh, man, I wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, because I would have been like, would you just? But right. Either way. But, yeah, eventually clear heads prevailed. Um, bec- and literally one of the selling points was, listen, we already have a hybrid wine trail. We have a mixing of tourism dollars between the state. We have a mix- mixing of tax dollars between the states. So, come on. We're already allowing New York, or New York State's allowing this to happen. Pennsylvania, come on, let's, let's wake up and get on board. And they have a completely different alcohol beverage i mean they have an abc state which is a sure, yeah, beverage control Quakers. completely different they it's all you, state you can't stores. go buy a six pack of beer to get a convenience store down there you got to mm-hmm. go to a beer store yeah. which is just weird um, yeah, if but you want to buy more than a six pack you got to go to a distributor yeah so you know it, it's we don't even know what we're getting into with that yet but we now have the paper that says we can we sure. were actually signed up to do one thing which would have been last saturday Mm-hmm. Um, at the Lake Erie Speedway, but again, COVID had that canceled, mm-hmm. so we were pretty excited to get down there for the first time. But we work with a couple of promoters down there from Erie Promotions and things like that that we keep talking to them. I was talking to Mark today, and I was like, hey, just so you know, I actually do possess the license now, so when you guys get back on board, don't forget us. So we're excited to start pushing that way. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Good for you. Wow. Well, there's also a sign that says Coast to Coast. So have you shipped? We won medals. Won medals in different states. Yeah, but we do okay. ship to California, if oh, that's yeah. your question. Yeah. We'll okay. ship any place you want us to ship. <laughs> Caveat. There yeah. are a few states where we can't, but for the most part. <laughs> there's a few felony states that we shouldn't ship to that we don't, but, you know. 
most. I think there's down to like five of them. Kansas and Utah are two of them. But yes, okay. you can't. Even, if you're in an airplane, I don't know if it's true now or not. But if you were in an airplane, they couldn't serve drinks flying through Kansas airspace. What? I didn't know that. On an airplane. Now, Dumb. Re- <laughs> <laughs> remember yeah, that I'm sorry. old. Yeah. So it's conceivable that they maybe have lifted that. But, I mean, literally, you know, it, it was not last call, but flying from Chicago to San Francisco, Chicago to L.A., we Certain- couldn't get a drink for about 20 minutes. Certain places we don't ship to, like Alaska, Hawaii, you know, mm-hmm. air freight would just make it just impossible to make it economical for people to do it. Yeah, really. Um, so if it ever comes to something like that where somebody's heading to Alaska or whatever, you know, like, just wrap it up, put it in your check baggage, and you can take it with. Like, you don't have to worry about it. And they're like, oh, you know, old school when they're worried about the, the, the belly of the plane not being pressurized or it's going to freeze or whatever, but those days are gone, you mm-hmm. know, so... I mean, if your shampoo doesn't freeze and blow up, your bottle of wine is not going to freeze right. and blow up, so you're fine. Sure. The reason why we, we bring that up and we ask is because we do have listeners in other states, which we still find that hilarious, but there's uh, there's a lot of people that will reach out to us via, like, email or DM sure. or, or something, and they're like, hey, what you guys just did made it sound amazing, and I can't even get it. So oh, you can bringing, get it. Yeah, Meredith so State Winery. In, com. Perfect. So bringing in uh, wineries onto the podcast is obviously a totally different ballgame than whiskey, which is what we started with. Right. Because now, obviously, you can't ship mm-hmm. bourbon, but you can ship wine. Some of that's re- relaxing a little bit, too, because like, yeah, I've seen some Facebook it. postings where they can have like little sample packs of bourbons and yep. whiskeys sent to people. So. Yeah. yeah. Slowly. The blue laws are slowly starting to fade away which is nice Mm -hmm. absolutely because it's a massive industry that people want to get into and well and to take it back take it back a little bit from like your initial questions and stuff like that when when he was actually at the signing of the farm winery bill in 1976 right Mm -hmm. you're actually at the signing kind of hidden behind fred johnson well that's because fred (laughs) god rest his soul he leaned forward boom (laughs) and stepped in front of me um but (laughs) Since then, I mean, that was the farm winery industry. Now we have the farm brewery, we have the cidery, we have the distilling, we have a little bit of everything going on. So now it's a whole farm craft beverage promotion, and there's a yeah, lot like of a coalition. It's a lot oh, of absolutely. impetus moving forward, and it's and it makes some serious tax dollars for the state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, people want to drink. Well, no between doubt. the excise tax and the sales tax that it generates, it's it's a money maker, mm-hmm. and that's part of why. The, the governor promotes it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Interesting. And he used to work with Andy's dad, Mario. God oh, yeah. bless his soul. <laughs> he, knew, he was on a first name basis with Mario. Really? Yeah. Mario and Matilda used to, when I went to Albany, I'd stop at their house. I think it's called a mansion, governor's mansion or something. Yeah. So wow. That's incredible. He used to fly like planes and stuff. He was cool back in the day. No, <laughs> I, back in the day. I, had, I had a friend, a Goomba, and I just heard that. <laughs> anyway, a friend of mine was a veteran, and he was getting his pilot's license, and you have to pay 10% of the cost of the airplane to use in veterans' administration to pay the rest, and you could fly. Hmm. And so... For 50 bucks, I can fly from here to Albany and back. Right. 10 bucks an hour is what it cost me. Wow. And Henry was grinning. I mean, there were times when Henry misunderstood what the, the tower said, and he turned the wrong direction, or he followed <laughs> in behind a jet plane that had just taken off. And I didn't know that a Piper Club could go bottom side up and still come back. But, <laughs> hey, you know what can I say? He's here to tell the story. That's it. <laughs> So what would be a, a next step? Obviously, once we're out of this whole situation, what would be a next step for the winery? Like, what would be the next thing that you would like to do? Well, to go back to wholesale distribution, Oof. you ask where the wine's available. In February, we, we have had a sales force of our own. And they're great people, but it just kind of dissolved. Some of them got old. Some of them found something else they'd rather do. Some of them just went off and did something else. And so in February, we went with what's called the Empire Craft Alliance, which is a bunch of beer distributors for Budweiser. They cover the state. And it's been very good for us. And they, they It was literally five weeks before the pandemic hit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
time. And it was just like a godsend, seriously. I mean, it took, God blessed us. We probably wouldn't that. be sitting here talking if we hadn't made that move. Yeah. So. But uh, it, it's been very good for us. We've got most of the state covered. And I think there's three counties that we're not currently in that would be from the Hudson Valley this way. Um, and then the next effort, of course, would be go south toward the city. Yeah, we're not in metro yet. It's, no. a, and it's weird, you know, as, as much as when things are great and the government wants to talk about, yay, New York State, and they're really just talking about New York City and sure. Long Island. <laughs> and when things are bad, it's boo New York State, the entire state. Um, but when it comes to liquor, like, there's a big divide right at the Hudson Head and Metro, meaning Manhattan and Long Island. It's a, just a completely different world. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the palettes change, the mindset changes, and it's just different. Um, I technically, I shouldn't be here right now. I'm supposed to be at the state fair. Uh, this is this would have been my 30th fair in a row. I'm a dinosaur. Wow. Uh, I started the, ni- the New York State Fair in 1990 with my mother. They started the State Fair in 1978, two years after we incorporated, and this would have been our 42nd straight fair. But obviously with COVID, mm-hmm. everything was shut down, uh, so it's just odd for me to be in this area right sure. now because it's like, even though it's my home, it's just weird. I'm never around for Labor Day. I'm never around this time of year. Um, so I'm the event guy. I'm the guy that's always lining up the events and going out there and getting the staffing and things like that, whether we're double or triple booked as many weekends in that 12 to 14 weekend period that we have in the summer. I try to jam it as full as I can mm-hmm. um, with stuff. And obviously, you know, we got gutted from that. So that was that's at least a third of what we are as a business. Um, and so I mentioned earlier we have this thing called the slush bus. Uh, and back in 2016, I said, let's come up with a food truck. And he's like, what? And so it's on the wall over there as you're kind of looking at it. It's so cool. Yeah, and, um, yeah, well. and it was it was just a concept where I was like, you know what? Food trucks are coming big. I said, you know, there's this thing called the Mercer's Wine Ice Cream while out there. But Mercer's Dairy came out with a wine infused ice cream. And nobody really knew how to classify it. And so U.S. Congress passed a law that 16 states recognized at that point. Um, basically, the, the, the easy speak on that is... Um, anything in a frozen state at 5% alcohol or less in the eyes of the liquor authority are viewed or, or is viewed, viewed as a frozen dessert and not an alcoholic beverage. Still can't sell it to kids, but it's a, it's a loophole when it comes into that. And so we built a food truck. And I can take this thing and I can go to a site and within 30 minutes I'm selling product and within 30 minutes I'm torn down and I'm driving down the street. Um, so it's not your typical ice cream truck with the cool music coming out of <laughs> yeah. it and whatever and having the adults he has chasing cool music. me. But yes, yes, no. Yeah, but what it's, kind of music is for a wine truck? Uh, Pandora. <laughs> whatever, wherever I'm on. I just did the Metallica concert two nights ago there at the go. Transit Drive-In, and so I was jamming pa- Metallica radio. I mean, and people were just loving it, and it was cool. Um, so I'm taking right now, I'm taking the bus out five days a week, um, just doing a one day here, one day there just to keep it relevant just to keep it you know keep it out there and keep me sane because mm-hmm. like i said i'm the events guy and right now i should be at the state fair with three different locations going and 15 people working every day and and it's just from that standpoint right. i kind of go a little bit stir crazy because that's what my summers typically are mm-hmm. uh, where he stays here and keeps the lid glued down i'm out there grinding and doing that whole grassroots and shaking hands and kissing babies not joe biden style but um <laughs> i hate politics <laughs> <laughs> moving on it's but, <laughs> it's it's funny you bring up the uh the five oh, percent awesome. mix right. where uh i forgot who we were literally just talking to about it where somebody grabbed wine ice cream uh-huh. in Wegmans mm-hmm. and tried to cash out and then the cashier was like well can i see your id credit to them right and they were like yeah here's my, like that's weird i'm just buying ice cream and it didn't even click right like it's you can't buy that if you're under the age of 18 yeah because 21. or 21 rather sorry this, this i is forgot what state i'm in yeah. but yeah how old are you the, uh, right <laughs> <laughs> 28 the the uh trap the voice yeah <laughs> 28 <laughs> put your shoulder back <laughs> but yeah and then and then she literally just had to like leave it there on the belt because right. she couldn't buy it and of course it was a little bit of an embarrassment and then it just kind of clicked like oh like i guess that makes sense <laughs> like it's, right. it's wine infused ice cream and but you couldn't buy it for and give it to her right. correct no no so one of the one of the benefits with with said law is the bus is licensed as a food truck so 
I'm actually governed outside of our winery license. I'm governed by the municipality or uh, the health department that, that has it. So like if I was heading to like Dunkirk, um, I have to go to the city of Dunkirk and get a permit and things like that. But I have to also get an annual mobile food service permit from Chautauqua County Health Department. Outside of that, my license says frozen dessert. So one of the benefits that I have is with this whole new restrictive, like you have to have food to go with your beverage and things like that and be sitting and whatever. I don't ask people to sit down and it's a frozen dessert. You know, wow. so I don't have to serve them a meal. I do have snacks on board. If someone's like, Hey, you're supposed to, here you go, have some snacks for free. I won't charge you, but I'll give you something that to have with your beverage or, you know, with your wine slush, but it's technically a gray area, but I'm also really respectful about it. Like sure. I don't push the point and like, I don't make it loud and proud and you know, I can because I'm beating the drum mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Cause there's too many I'm going to, uh, not, not to be on Facebook, there's so many keyboard warriors out there Absolutely. that just want to just bang on the whole social media thing. And I got a lot of pushback initially, but I finally just came out and said, listen, this is my license. This is how my license is written. I am within my rights with all state and local authorities. And it finally died down and everybody went away. So Wow. That's all it takes, a little bit of proof. Yeah. yeah. Once everybody understands a full story, which, you know, it's, exactly it's, it's impossible And we're all nowadays, just trying to survive. I mean, right. no one's out there trying to do anything illicit. We're just literally right. trying to freaking survive at this point. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I'm one of the owners, and I'm out there grinding as best I can. Sure. You know, but but that's my other thing is I hate, don't ever call me the boss. Don't, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm in the trenches with my guys every day. I'm just, I, I hate that when, you know, people sit, stop looking at me right there. Can feel you <laughs> but like I, I just I'm that guy like I'm gonna get in the trenches and I'm never gonna ask you to do something that I don't currently do or haven't done in the past and so sure. I try to treat everybody equally like that um, that's just the that's way awesome. I, I just learn differently you know coming up through management companies doing the whole um, culinary thing um, I ended up doing more dishes than my dish off, dishwashers were doing back in the day and so it taught me a lot about what not to do if I ever got in that position because there's too many people out there that really use and abuse that title mm-hmm. i don't like titles absolutely Just be, be you completely so. agree awesome i yeah that <laughs> that i have nothing else to add yeah that's fantastic yeah so where can people find you are you on social media at all i mean mm-hmm. we talk about facebook but yeah. how, how can people find you um so we're on facebook um i think it's at merit winery right Sorry, my marketing girl's off to the side. Um, That's right, moral support. We technically have a Twitter and an Instagram. We don't do a lot with it, and I'm hoping that we can work that out a little bit sh- you know, what, shortly. Are you running for president or something? No. <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Please don't look into my records. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously our website. And, you know, we try to stay as active with our Facebook as we can. I think we're over 9,000 or something like that. Yeah. Oh, talk them. See? Wow. Or over 12,000. Marketing is um, still good. But we try to do a lot of like Absolutely. and share things, you know, and, and try to get, you know, like, you know, call to action things, like mm-hmm. trying to engage people. Um, anytime I take the bus out, I'm hitting them up and I'm saying, hey, Facebook beach, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be here with a bus. Like and share this. Or I'll say, hey, wear your merit gear and I'll give you a dollar off your drink. Oh, that cool. kind of stuff. Just trying nice. to get people involved as best I can um, for the little bit of social media that I actually know mm-hmm. and understand, which, I mean, I, I fill my glass. Social what? Exactly. He's just getting into Facebook, and he's wondering why his computer gets full of bugs sometimes, because he's Mr. Clicker. He oh, clicks yeah. in everything. I keep trying to tell him. <laughs> you can't believe everything you read on Facebook. <laughs> well, if it's on the computer, it's got to be true. Absolutely. Got to so, be. So what are your hours of operation, too, just so people can come and So we're actually only closed four days a year. Oh. Um, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, and Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, okay. But... He's always around anyway, so we're almost never closed. Um, <laughs> I wish I was kidding. I can, I can. There's nothing wrong with that. He's got clearly sure remember as a good. kid. I, you know, my my God rest my mother's soul. Um, he stood up from Thanksgiving dinner one day and came down here to sell a bottle of wine, and my mother <sighs> was disappointed. We'll go with that. <laughs> Well, professionally disappointed. <laughs> like, she could have made a career out of that disappointment. But oh, anyways, yeah. It's just somebody's driven from, I don't care whether Forest it's down Hill. the street or three <laughs> miles <laughs> or, or Pittsburgh. And, oh, you're closed? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, I wanted a bottle of wine for my dinner. Okay. What do you want? Let's go. Sir, you it's have something on your face. Well, that's gravy from my dinner that I just stood up from. <laughs> 
It shows dedication, though. It's I matters. guess that's what it is. I guess I'm that's what it is. is. <laughs> I also live by myself, and what am I going to do? Sit and watch TV? Yuck. Yeah. True. Yeah. So I guess a more candid answer is uh, 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday on our, on our summer hours. We, we shave an hour off during the winter itself, and then on Sundays it's noon to 6. But if we're around and somebody shows up, like a few times this week, he's been open until 7.30 because people are here just enjoying themselves. So yeah. it's not going to ring 6 o'clock and we're going to throw your ass out. It's just not going to happen that way. Right. Well, it was 7 o'clock last night. It was 7.30 the night before. Not last night. It was 7 o'clock Sunday night and it was 7.30 Saturday night. Okay. Yeah, and, and this great. place is a cool place to hang out. I mean, you have beer on tap, too. You have the great environment inside. You have the, the outdoor patio where you can sit down, and then you have the uh, pavilion area when it's open. So mm-hmm. this is a place that you can easily come here and just spend hours. Yeah, and there's and it, no road noise. Right. I was going to say, as you guys mentioned before we got on air, it's just very, very peaceful, mm-hmm. and that's one of the coolest things because we're far enough out to where it's peaceful, but we're not so far off the beaten path that, like, you're worried about dueling banjos in the background, you know, somebody coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has Google, they can Google, but where is your, what is your address so people know? It is 2264 King Road, like Burger King, okay. and that's Forestville. But there's no burger. <laughs> right. Just Damn. wine. Yeah. <laughs> Just wine. And 1,100 pounds of prime rib probably somewhere circulating through no, both <laughs> kitchens. <laughs> He All cooked an awful lot of prime rib for that prime rib dinner. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. We ended up with, what, four leftovers or six yeah. leftovers? Yeah, so our garbage plate this weekend, I actually have a, a couple that I threw in the freezer. So they're cooked, and I'm going to throw them on a slicer and one of my, my proteins. I think it's typically it's a chicken breast or a hot dog or a cheeseburger or a hamburger. I'm going to do shaved prime rib can be one of the pro, oh, uh, nice. proteins this weekend. So that's a little bit different. So Spoiling people. Yeah. We yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, we try. Yeah. We want people to come here and relax and have a good time. Mm-hmm. And if I can't make them smile, you didn't see me. Okay. I mean, I'm, I, I do Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. But, I mean, I, I want people to laugh. It's yeah. just that simple. We all need to laugh more. Mm-hmm. It's just a wonderful thing to laugh. Got your fa- you got your, uh, no, face I'm not going to use my thong Do face it. mask. He wears a thong as a face mask. <laughs> Have you guys seen it yet? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Literally, like, <laughs> right 45 <laughs> seconds before you walked down the driveway, he ah. pulled it out. It was amazing. I think his podcast should see your face mask. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Well, no problem. We appreciate That's all awesome. your time. Thank yeah. you so no, much no. for everything. Well, yeah. thank you for coming by. Yeah, it's fun. It's That's been fun. It really has. And, and yeah. I hope everybody that listens can get a chance to come see us because it really is fun. And as I like to say to people, y'all come see us now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys have great wine, so there's really no reason for people not to come see you. Yeah. Huh. This and wine, Wine Master, is fantastic. You Perfect. start this end of the tray, you can do the whole thing. There you go. Perfect. Or you can just stay here. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll make it work. Cool. Well, go. thank you guys very much. We appreciate your thank time. Thank you. Excellent.